And but here's a story that I didn't know how bad it was until I heard about it last night on the news, but my producer gave it to me this morning. How many of you knew that down in Ohio, Haitians are all over the place? Black people from Haiti. Do you know the hellhole Haiti is? They have allowed those people into our country. They have allowed those people into our country. And these people are black from Haiti. Haiti is hell. I believe that's where hell is located. But I happen to have gone to Israel. I know that the gates of hell is over there down there in Israel because I saw it. When we visited Israel, we went over to the gates of hell. And it was a dark place. I'm like, what the? But Haiti is hell. And those people in our country now, thanks to the Biden and Harris administration, and they are in, over there in Ohio, and according to these reports, raising pure Haiti hell. But the Bidens and the Harris administration don't care because they want votes. They don't care what misery they bring upon you. They want the vote. Isn't that amazing? Yes, Jesse. That is amazing. Fox is reporting thousands of Haitians have arrived in Springfield since the COVID-19 pandemic. And residents have been pointing, uh, uh, have been pointing to an uptick in crime, mayhem, and car crashes due to the massive increase of new residents, Haitian migrants, illegal aliens. Residents in Ohio are angry about the cultural clash between local. Locals and Haitians, migrants, illegal aliens, at city council meetings, demanding the city take actions on the issue. Watch this first sound bite from Fox. And I see you guys just sitting up there in them comfy chairs and suits and like, and I'm getting out here every day and I'm broadcasting this and you guys are just sitting up there in suits or something. Like, I, I really challenge you guys to get out here and do something. These Haitians are running into trash cans. They're running into buildings. They flipping cars in the middle of the street. They, you got a bunch of people on a bus getting dropped off at a gas station to come down here. I know a single mom that FaceTimed me this morning at the welfare office that, that really needs something. And it's nothing but immigrants over there. They're in the park grabbing up ducks by their neck and cutting their head <laughs> off and walking off with them. And, and eating them like... We got to do something, bro. It's kids out here getting hurt. like, And who is getting paid? Like, how much money is y'all really getting paid, like, to bring them over here? Like, I know it's deeper than them. I know that's where they come from, and that's what they do. Wow. They're eating the ducks from the pond. You're not supposed to eat the ducks. They're, according to this guy, they're cutting the heads off the ducks in the pond. The, pot, the ducks in the pond are just put there for beauty. When you're walking and strolling along and just looking around and maybe on a date, you look at the ducks in the pond, you go, oh. But the Haitians look at the ducks, according to the report, they go, meal time. <laughs> it's lunch time. <laughs> in Ohio. And that's a black guy complaining about black people. You can't call him a racist, huh? Here's another soundbite from that city hall meeting. Watch this. I'm speaking of about illegal immigrants, people that jump the fence, and we give them a place to stay. All right? Illegal immigrants cost taxpayers billions of dollars. There are proper channels to which to become an American citizen. There's been people waiting for years that are willing to go through the proper channels to become a working member of society, not dependent on a handout from taxpayers. 
The only people that don't take the proper channels are people that would never make it through the front door that don't deserve to be here and take the opportunity away from somebody who does. The criminals, degenerates, and other countries are becoming America's dependents. Over one and a half million people have died in America's history in order to ensure the freedoms and the rights that we all enjoy every day. They died to ensure our freedom, not the whole world. Uh, I suggest that, that, like Americans of past and present, they pick up arms and fight in their own countries for their freedoms. Thank you. Okay, no, no clapping, please. Thank you. <laughs> no clapping. It's interesting. At one time, we used to do a lot of protests like that at the city councils and commission meetings. And you stand up there telling them the the representative of the meeting something that they already know. They already know these people are illegals. They already know that they're giving these people taxpayer money. They already know that these people bring cri- bring crime in, and that they don't care. So and so when you're talking to the Representatives in the media, they don't care at all. They don't even listen to you. Because you're telling them something that they already know, but they don't care because they want more power and wealth. So they want the illegals there. They don't care what you say. There was, I saw one of the, in one of the sound by a white woman at this same meeting, and she was like, they're, I'm all alone, something like that. Oh, me, my husband and I, they're old. We're old. And these Haitians are throwing mattresses in our yard and junks in front of our house. And I'm afraid. Something like that. And she was telling me, and the committee don't care. Don't y'all know they don't care? And you go to a town hall meeting, and it's a waste of time. And then when you come back from the uh, meeting when it's time to vote, who do they, who doors are they knocking on? Your doors, and you vote for them again. And then you have another town hall meeting. So I've been told, and I heard this before too, that the Haitians are supposed to be, what are they? Kamala Harris was bragging about how those Haitians were given temporary protection status. So in the eyes of the government, they're actually legal. Bo- because they have temporary status from what? From being like refugees and all that. From being deported. Uh, sorry. What? From being deported. From where? From America. They're allowed to be, to stay here. Well, why do they have temporary status? Uh, I think Kamala might have Kamala and uh, Biden might have done that after that incident where the cowboy border patrol were they looked like they were whipping the Haitians trying to come in here illegally. Oh, yeah. Uh, maybe. And so after that, they did this uh, nicey-nice thing for the Haitians. Because the Haitians' country keeps on falling apart. They have but all it, these disasters and things. Civil unrest. So they were given... And so they said that given only... protection I, from deportation. Right? I know, but they said that first they gave all a few of them protection. Now, uh, something like 100,000, 100, I believe. 100,000, right? Correct, yeah. I seen her say it herself out of her mouth. So, Can you imagine living in Ohio and, uh, and you white and all of a sudden 100,000 black show about a Haitian? <laughs> I heard that something like a quarter, a quarter or a third of the, of the uh, city is now a bunch of Haitians. Wow! Right, the population is roughly 58,000. Oh, I think it's even in the packet. Um, and about 20,000 Haitians have arrived. Yeah, according to Fox. It's no wonder they're saying that in in twenty forty something, white people be the minorities. Yeah. In twenty forty two, thank you, there, white people be the minority. Lord have mercy, Lord, if ever we needed you, Lord, we need you now. Come by here, Lord, come by here. And bring some white babies with you. <laughs> we need Mary, Martha, and Jane to have some white babies. Oh, a mess. Oh, yeah, I saw that on Jesse Waters yesterday on Fox. 
where do, eventually, where will the white people end up if they keep running ev- from everywhere, all the best places? Where are they going to end up? Everybody can't go to Florida. <laughs> and Texas is turning blue now, so everybody can't go to Texas. Where are they going to end up, James? Mars. Those are your people. Mars or the moon or the International Space Station. <laughs> Elon Musk said that it, like, if these tests go well in the next two years, that he thinks in like four plus years, there'll be humans living on Mars. Nice. So, right on time. Cause that's okay, when white the, people. That's when <laughs> the country will be uh, mostly non-white people. So they're going to end up on the moon. Nice. But anyway, uh, so... We played those stories from uh, Foss there of all the Haitian and the negative impact they're having upon Ohio. Foss is reporting that in a town hall of about of uh, in a town hall of fifty eight thousand people, about twenty thousand Haitians have arrived. Wow! In a town of fifty eight thousand people, about 20,000 Haitians have arrived, according to city officials. Ooh, I know the white people getting out of there fast. They like looked out the window and they saw a dark cloud coming. <laughs> Center man, there's a dark cloud coming. Let's go home. Wow. A town of can you just imagine, here you are in a town of white folks, 58,000 people, and you look up one morning, there come a cloud of 20,000 Haitian black people. You're like, what the? We're being invaded. Camilla Harris stated the Haitians, migrants, need support. Watch this from ABC. That is why, also, starting with our administration, we gave TPS, Temporary Protected Status, to Haitian migrants, 55,000. And then more recently, we extended Temporary Protected Status to over 100,000 Haitian migrants for that very reason, that they need support, they need protection. Wow. And this is the female you want to vote for. And you're going to have some dummies voting for her. And then they cry. <laughs> what the? It's going to be interesting tonight. The debate is at 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern time between the Great White Hope and Camilla Harris. Oh, God. It's going to be amazing. I don't know what's going to happen. But we'll see. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Hey, repeat that. So they, uh, a few years ago, the viral, there were viral images of cowboy border patrol people. Yeah. Border, border patrol horse. people yeah. on their horses, and they had their reins. and Right, and, uh, like this. So, yeah, like that. It was like Jesse on this horse right here <laughs> that you see peeking into the screen. And, uh, and they were trying to contain the Haitians who were illegally coming across the Rio Grande or something. And the uh, dumb plebs, the liberals, were like, oh, they're whipping, the, uh, they're whipping these Haitians. <laughs> and Kamala said, oh, there it is. There's some footage. <laughs> oh, look, he's whipping the Haitians. This, cow- this white racist cowboy. And they weren't even whooping him. <laughs> right. It's just the reins or whatever you call those uh, thingy. The They're cowboys. not even but lassoing they, them. They knew that. They what just they said that to deceive the people. And so Kamala brought up, brought that up way back then, and was like, "Oh, this conjured images from history of how white Americans did to the American Indians and to the slaves." <laughs> <laughs> Everything about the slave. Painful images of history. What a mess. I remember that story. Ridiculous. Yeah. They just say anything. And then they use that as an excuse to give more 
temporary protected status to the illegal Haitians. They, how come the Haitians don't have protected status in their own country? Because their own country's a mess. Right. That's why they need to make up some status protection. And what's funny is Haiti is is the other half of the island from, what, the Dominican Republic or something? Yeah. And, Which and, is like a Catholic country. And then the Dominican Republic ran them away, too, from the Haitian. They, like <laughs> they built a wall. Huh? They built a big wall. Yeah, I thought I heard the something like that. And they the got Dominican, towers, guns. To keep the Haitian out. Yeah. The Dominicans are a functioning country. And then the Haiti's basically not functioning. And Camilla and Joe Biden bring them here and protect them. Yeah, right. How about protecting the citizens here? Amazing. All right. All right. Georgia, oh, my, my. What a mess. I, I can't believe I'm here what I'm here. And I'm black and slow. Y'all are saying, some of you, not all of you, that it's okay for the government to decide who they're going to arrest or not. Do you know that you're telling a godless body of people that you can decide this father is guilty and you go up in there and arrest him? And he showed you he would try to help his son the best way he knew how. He didn't know his son was going to go and shoot out. And just think about, have you thought about the people that run it out of government nowadays? And you want them to make that kind of decision. <coughs> the founders of the Constitution... And this great country never intended for this to happen. Never. They tried hard to make sure it didn't happen. They have the Constitution. Less government, we the people, the government cannot decide what happened in your life, in your home. It's just for the roads and, and physical stuff. And you have said to the government, there are exceptions to the rule where you can decide on what you... Government, you can decide what to do with my life. Do you know the government don't like you? The government don't like you. There's not one in government that likes you except Trump. Meaning that they're willing to work for you and not against you. That's what I mean by like. They say, okay, if you hire me, I'm going to bring back jobs. I'm going to close the borders. I'm going to bring back uh, uh, drilling. I'm going to build a strong military so the world can know they can't touch us. That's all we need the government for. The government was never meant to make decisions about your personal life. We are the courts for that. Meaning you know, we break the law. Super chat. Super, super. Super chats. So, hey, what do you honestly think about this? Uh, I think that I better steer clear of everybody. Meaning that, um, there's like normal people who are agreeing with this. I know. And, and so why you got to stay clear? Because you know, how, you know how you're more protected if you keep a low profile? Right. That's yes. kind of what I want to do right now. <laughs> I want to hide under that rock. Are you as stunned as I am that we have American people who are saying yes, that the government can decide to arrest and accuse a man who have not done anything wrong? Yeah. That's what we know. And it's because it's, like you said, going after the whites, going after the men. Right. They and all, breaking up the family, trying to impose, like, they're the family, he the head of the family. Like, the government's the head of the family. Yeah. And uh, and also to go after the guns. 
the the right to carry and own awesome guns. I predict that if we continue down this path, that eventually America will lay down their guns and give it to the government. Yeah, they they're telling the government, "You can come and arrest me if my child do something wrong. Come and get me." They're saying the government. To, think about the people in government. <laughs> <laughs> and the and, and Christians and non Christians alike have said to them, Okay, yeah, you decide that I'm guilty because of something that somebody else did, you can come and get me. The government must be rejoicing right now. I think in, in California if cops find you like you let cops into your home. And if your gun is not stored properly, quote unquote, they can arrest you. That's a felony, I think. I, th- I believe I remember hearing something like that too. Like it has to be locked in a in in a certain way, in your own home. Amazing. Otherwise, it's and a felony. the people say yes to it. Yep. I didn't know that people could be this dumb. I, I mean, when I say dumb, that they just. They tell a body of government, you can do what you want to me. You don't work for I don't work. You don't work for me. I work for you. They have everybody scared. That's what it is. I um I have said over and over and over and over and over again and again and again that my country is not coming back. America is never coming back. And. Americans never coming back for so many reasons, really. I mean, so many things has happened to make sure the country never returns. And one of the primary things that has happened and it is happening that will assure that America never return. It, it just ain't no way. Ain't no way. Ain't no way for me to love you. If you don't let me, ain't no way America's going to turn around. The number one reason, and this is, it appears to be supported by nearly all people in America. I can't even separate the men from the women or the Republican from conservative, Christian from non-Christian. There, there appears, and I could be wrong, Except for a few, not all, not all, not all, but most, that it is in agreement that this way that America never return is that men are under attack. There is a conservative effort to get rid of men. Get rid of them, uh, make them act different, be different, think different, take away the jobs from them, degrade them if they dare try to speak up or dare try to defend themselves or dare try to get a job. Uh, and that agreement is agreed by all, or not all, but most. And it does again, it doesn't matter which party you belong to. There is a strong conservative effort, and not just the white man they're trying to get rid of, they are trying to get rid of men, period, and they're doing a good job of it. They're going to pay attention to how the average man, man think today. There's no separation between the way he think and the woman think. And they don't want to be conservative effort, right? And they don't want... What? Concerted effort, whatever. And they don't want to be reminded that they think and feel and do exactly what women do to themselves and to others. A man, men don't even understand at all what it means to be a leader. Zero. And you hear them talk about, oh, I'm the head of the woman. I mean, the woman. That's all they ever talk about, women. They're way much more to life than that. You get yourself right, you're going to be able to be, to, to, God, to live in the right way, period. But the men are now focused on, 
I'm just head of the woman. I tell the woman what to do. And no, you don't. But there is, there's not a strong effort to encourage men to go back to being themselves. And this is by everybody, the liberal media, conservative media. And if you do speak up for men, you are attacked as though you spoke up for the KKK or Hitler. And so because of that, that's number one reason men never, I mean, the country's never coming back. There's no leadership anymore. There's no head. And just because you say the woman can lead, that doesn't mean it's true. It ain't true. It ain't going to be true. It ain't going to be true. It can't be true. It won't be true. It's never going to be true. Things are going to only get worse. Mark my word. It can't get better with a false leader. But men are under attack today, even by other men, because they have the mindset of the mother of the woman. They're jealous, envy, strife, suicide of thought, loneliness, looking for love in all the wrong places. So, number one, men are, uh, it's bad, too. It's just, like, really bad. It's, like, real bad. It's, like, the attack on men and the men who have accepted it and are going along with attacking other men to make sure they stay in the same category they're in, father state, is bad. But anyway, so that's number one. Number two is government takeover. The government literally control the people now. I want you to think about this. The government is a body of human beings with no soul, no, no soul, with evil natures. People like Nancy Pelosi, Maxine Waters, Sheila Jackson Lee, she did. Um, the men that's r- running the government now. Uh, um, all those stupid people, Alexander Cortez and others. Those people are now telling you 100% what you can and cannot do in your own life, in your own home, in your own life. And they can now arrest you even if you have not done anything. They can claim that you did, and the people fall for it, and they agree to the government. A bunch of evil, wicked, at heart people tell them what to do. They tell them, we're going to take your money and we're going to be a house for the homeless. Homeless people that don't even want to live in a house. And if you put them in a house, they're going to destroy it. Our tax dollars. And the people are like, oh yeah, the the, the unhouses. <laughs> the government changed the name. Anything that makes you feel good. And you fall for it. A bunch of, you are saying to a bunch of evil people, I want you to rule over me. And they're like, think about that. It's amazing. I just, it, it's bad, and that's bad too because. The government now control every aspect of your life. You have Camilla Harris running for, quote unquote, running for president. All she does is laugh and give fake talks. That's all she does, laugh and give fake talk. And that little male that's running with her, I don't know what's up with him. I don't know what's up with him. And there are people who are considering voting for her. Do you now know that my country is not coming back? Do you now know 
that my country is not coming back? And, and I can go on and on and on. But knowing that the American people is in agreement with the government, think about Ilion Omar and uh, Cortez and, and, uh, and the Republicans. Not all, but most of them. All these Republican women running for office. And you can't wait to vote for them. You're voting for your own destruction. It is we, it's no longer we the people, it's we the government. The government is controlling every aspect of your life. And you're okay with that. I guess you've forgotten that it's, it's we, the, we the people, not we the government. And you're just accustomed to it now. I guess. And that's why we have communist socialism in America. Because the people don't care. They go along with it. And then they cry. And then they cry. Because now they they realize, you know what? Not only do I not have control of my life within I don't even have control of my life without. Think about this. You have a chance of voting in Donald Trump. And I say Donald Trump separate from the Republican Party because he is totally different than any of them at all. A, 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 a man who have proven that he can make America function in his physical way, not for your spirit. But in the physical way, he could take care of the job to make America function for the good of the American people. But someone tell you, oh, he cheated on his wife. He this and he that. He hateful, he that. And you believe it, whether it's true or not, and go along with it, coming from other liars. Because you're not a free thinker. My country is gone. Amazing. But anyway, I want to show you this story. It's uh, about some guy, a Dolphin football player. Is that football? Dolphin football player by some guy by the name of Tyreek Hill. Well, he must be black if he named, if he named Tyreek. He black. So Tyreek Hill was uncooperative during detention before a game. Police union says. Some of you may have heard about this story. I heard about it this morning. So apparently this football player ran into the police somewhere along the way. And according to the police union, he didn't cooperate. No wonder he black. You're not supposed to cooperate with the police if you're black. How else will you cry police brutality? How else will you cry racism if you cooperate? What the? So I don't know if it's true, but this is what the union says. Foster's reported that the Miami-Dade Police Department on Monday released officer body cam footage of the incident involving Miami Dolphin wide receiver Tyreek Hill. He said if he wasn't a celebrity, oh, he's a celebrity. Oh, I'm so excited. A football player is a celebrity. He said if he was a celebrity athlete, that would have been a different story playing out suggesting he may have been shot or hauled off to jail. Watch this from Miami-Dade Police. Hey, don't knock on my window like that, man. Don't knock on Why my don't you have your seatbelt on? Don't knock on my window. Why don't you have your seatbelt on? Don't knock on my window like that, no. Like what? Don't knock on my window like that. Why do you have it up? 
Don't knock on my window like that. Why you have it up? I have to knock to let you know I'm here. Don't knock that way you can lower it and talk Just to you. Give me my ticket, bro, so I can go. I'm gonna be late, gang. Do what you gotta do. What? What? Keep it down. Hey! Keep your window down. What? What? Danny. Hey! Keep your window down. Don't tell me what Keep your window down, I'm gonna get you out of the car. As a matter of fact, get out of the car. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Give me your get out of the car. Give me your we'll break that get, window. get out of the car. Get out. Get, out. get out of the car right now. We're not playing this game. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. What part of the building doing this now? Hey, Drew. Hey, Drew, I'm getting arrested, dude. <laughs> <clears throat> How come black people have to always act that way? Why? What happened to the blacks? They've been trained to act that way? Why did he have to talk to the police in that way? Let the window down, he wouldn't have to tap on the window. Why do, how come black, not all, not all, not all, not all, but how come black people don't act like human beings? And now they're going to, believe me, and according to the report, he said, from Fox, he said, if he wasn't a celebrity, he ain't no celebrity, a football player can't be no celebrity, a monk can get rid of him down there feel throwing a ball if you teach it how to. That ain't no celebrity. A celebrity is the person that sings, I'm going to knock on your door, ring on your bell, knock on your window too. If you come out tonight while the moon is bright, I'm going to knock and ring and sing until you do. That's a celebrity, it, uh, it, silly boy. A football ain't no ain't no celebrity. Why can he just let his window down? Yes, sir. Uh, let me see your driver's license. All right, there you go. Okay, you didn't have your seatbelt on, and if he didn't have it on, yeah, you're right. I'm wrong. Put the seatbelt on and go on to his little monkey game. Why he got to act that way? This is black people at one time was not this way for white people and Mexicans and Chinese. Oh, and, and Japan people. I want y'all to know. And I like well, about people. Black people were not always acting this way. I promise. I know I was there. This is. This came as a result of the civil rights movement. Because in the good old days when boys were boys, men were men, black people knew to let your window down or don't argue with the police. What you arguing for? And they got to pull you out of the car, and now you're going to cry, oh, I'm getting arrested. That didn't even happen during slavery. How come black people need to act this way? And you don't need, you don't need somebody to tell you not to act that way. You're like, common sense. Where's the common sense? Where's the common sense? If based on the video, the way that man acted, Tyree, whatever his name is, Hill, Tyree Hill, was totally wrong. There was nothing right about it based on the video. There was nothing right about it at all. And the incident did not have to go down the way it did. Had he followed the instruction. That's all he had to do. And then they, 
the black going to be some going to be cry racism, police brutality. And then the mama going to be, oh, that's my baby. I can't believe they treat my baby that way. And I, I raised my baby better. My baby is a football player. And I can't believe they treat my baby that way. Oh, oh Lord, uh, my baby. And then he'll stand inside mama like he's innocent. Grandpa, tell me about the good old days. And you're not going to believe what happened to the officers as a result of what we've seen on the video. I don't know if it happened before that or what happened after that. But the way Tyree, and, uh, we, what we saw in the video, Tyree had no business acting that way, zero. Human beings do, do not act that way. Well, human beings do because the nature is evil. I understand that. But guess what happened? Foster reported the Dolphins call for punishment for the officers involved in the incident. So the, if that's true, they're telling us that the Dolphins has no love for Tyrese to say, you know what, man, you acted wrong. We're going to punish you. What, what are you doing? That's not a way to represent the team. Why do you just say, you know what, Open, let your window down. Yes, officer, oh, you wear your seat, but you don't have your seatbelt on. And if you didn't have it on, right, officer, I'm wrong. And the officer might, may, would have let him go. Or if he gave him a ticket, he deserved a ticket. Okay, I learned my lesson from the ticket. But they want to punish the officer. This is what America looked like now. Now you still want the Haitians to come on in. Don't we already have enough problem with the blacks? You want more blacks in the, in the country? And not all blacks, not all, not all, not all. I like that. I know that. But what a mess, huh? And now the, the dolphin on court citizens report called for punishment. For the officers. No wonder nobody want to be a police in America today. This is evil. Pure evil. It has nothing to do with color. It has everything to do with the heart. That's evil. And Tyree shared his thoughts with CNN. Watch this soundbite from CNN. Tyree, obviously, watching that video, uh, I just when you watched it back for the first time, tell me what was what was going through your mind in those moments. Man, for real, you know, I was I was like, I was shocked, man. Like it, it's crazy because it all happened so fast, man. But like for me, man, like it just all happened so fast, and I really couldn't like gather everything that was happening. So it was crazy. You know, and me being a father, me being a husband and all that, man, I was just putting myself in that situation like, hey, I got to be smart. You know what I'm saying? That, that's where I really, I wasn't on that kind of energy. Like, I was chilling. Like, I was following rules. You know what I'm saying? What? I wasn't moving fast because, you know, I got injuries. You feel me? I got uh -oh. things that I go through. I play a physical sport. I've been doing this for a moment now, man. So, I'm dealing with some stuff. So, um, I guess... The officers, they felt like I wasn't doing it on their timing, but I was, I, I was doing it. But you know, man, I'm, I'm, I'm still kind of shell shocked from it, man. Yeah, you know, right. I'm embarrassed, you know. But oh, so according to the video, the officer was was telling you to let your window down, and you're like, "What are you knocking on my window for? Why are you knocking on my window like that? Let your window down, sir." And you let your window back up, and they tell you let it back down, and then they try to, they tell you get out of the car. You wouldn't get out. They drag you out according to the view. What are you? You should be embarrassed. I'm shell shocked. You should be shell shocked if the way it looked like on the video, you acted that way. 
you should be shell shocked, embarrassed. A grown man ain't got no business acting that way. Was that the lawyer? I think so. In the uh, uh, in the, the uh, Louis Farrakhan bow tie. <laughs> <laughs> We're not sure if that's the lawyer or not in the Louis Farrakhan bow, bow tie. They may have had no been doing what he did, uh, according to the video. Man, I'm, I, I can't believe it, man. I'm a father, I'm a husband, and man, I, I, I got injured. Everybody got injured. Uh, and man, I, and man, I ain't, and man. Why not just say, you know what? When the cop asked me to open my window, I should have. I really, I, 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 don't, I, I went into my ego and I refused to do it. And when they asked me to let it down, I should have done it. And when they said, get out of the car, I should have just jumped out. And I guarantee you, all, it would have turned out the way it did. Yeah, like we don't see the video. It's like the people who are over in the valley robbing everybody. And they're on the video camera, but they act like they're not on the video. <laughs> That's what we have in America today, folks. It wasn't always, always this way with the blacks. This came as a result of the civil rights movement, which was the worst thing that ever, 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 ever happened to the blacks other than uh, reparation. Not reparation, but uh, abortion. Reparation too, but abortion. Reparations now and reparations forever. <laughs> I've said this before and I'll say it again. I'm about to give you shocking news. Get ready. This isn't a warning sign that this news might be able to might not be able to be dealt with by all people. You might not be able to handle this. So turn your radio off if you they she cannot handle this. This is bad. And I told you, my country's gone. It is no longer tears of thee. My country is gone. And they made sure they knew exactly who to get rid of to make sure that America never, ever, but never, ever, ever return again. So get ready for this bad news. This is horrible. Horrible. This is bad news. This news is so bad I want to tear up. And it takes a lot for me to tear up. This news is worse than what happened in Georgia with the father being arrested and all that. This news should make everybody want to cry. By, y'all ready? One, two, three. By 20, 20, 2042. By 2042, according to this report, there will be no racial majority majority in the United States. Did you hear that? Tisha, please. Tisha, please. By 2042, there will be no racial majority in the United States. This is from Bloomberg. By 2042, there will be no racial majority in the United States. Minorities or groups that are thought of as minority now, minorities now will outnumber, get this, the white population. By 2042, the so-called minority groups will outnumber the white population in their own country. 
Now do you believe me when I say my country is never coming back? And the anchor baby have a graphic up there, and he got to look at it and explain it. U.S. white and minority populations. So this is the data that has been collected from 1970. And uh, you can see on the left, it starts with a tall orange bar that uh, represents the white population. Am I in the way of that? I'll, I'll take it down when we we'll get to that side. In oh, fact, okay. I'll do that right now. Okay. The orange bar represents the white population. 1970, they were right under 175 million with the minority populations just over 25 million. And you take it all the way to 2020, and you see the the bars are getting pretty close, and the projection is beyond that is that the the other color bar will overtake the white population bar. You can see all the way at the end with 2050. By then, now they're already way outnumbered. Amazing. This is from the U.S. Census and Census Bureau projections. White people, what do you think of that? What do you think of that, white people? In your own country, you will no longer rule. What do you think they're going to do to you? You think they, in some of this white man being locked up down in Georgia? Just wait. And if you doubt me, and I know you do, some of you, take a look over in South Africa and see what happened to the white folks over there when they became a, uh, they were overtaken by minority people. They ran them out of the cities, back onto the farmlands, and then they followed them over to the farmland and fight robbing and stealing and killing from them. That's coming to America. It's already here, but the fewer in number of white people, it's just going to get worse. White people. Now you see why you need to stop killing a man's baby ladies in the womb. We need more white babies, not less white babies. July is White History Month to remind you, and July will always be White History Month to remind you, we need white babies. You need to stop killing the white babies. You need to stop catering to the people of color. You need to stand up and not be afraid. Where will you go? They're going to run you out of your own country. And where will you go? You can't go to Europe. They've already done it over there. And now they're done doing it over here. What they've done over there, they're now doing it over here. By 2042, white people will be the minor minorities in your own land. And they don't like you. They blame you for every failure in their lives. And some of you are blaming the Jews, so you, you ain't no better. What the? You ought to be trembling. I thought it was bad that you agreed that the government can arrest a father who, according to a report that we've seen, ha or so far, have nothing to do with the shooting of his son, his son that his son committed. And the blind leads the blind. So there you have it. You can turn your TV back on now. By 2042, according to Bloomberg report, white people will no longer be the majority in their own country. I tremble to think what's going to happen. You think the attack on white people is bad now? You ain't seen nothing. And you guys are celebrating because this white man has been arrested in Georgia? Okay. You will live to regret it. 888-7753-773. Let me go to Alex, a first-time caller out of uh, Illinois. 
Alice, welcome to the show. You're on the air. How's it going, sir? How you all, doing? all is well. Thanks for calling. Of course. Um, I guess I'll stand front and center. Um, I remember you saying to not look for a woman and wait for God to present her to you. Yeah. So, and, so how do you overcome like the yearning for intimacy and uh, just grow into a proper man? Like, is this due to my upbringing with a single mother or yes. just... Uh, the only reason you're yearning for that is that you're, you're lost in your imagination and emotions. And the only reason you're lost in your imagination and emotions, you have taken on the spirit of your mother. You have her identity. And until you're able to see that you have her identity by being angry and then forgive her, you're going to be lost in your emotions. And those emotions, which are evil, going to make you think that w- what will make you happy is to have a wife or to have a woman or to have money or to have this or that. But when you overcome those e- thoughts and emotions by forgiving your mother, you you will be able to just live your life, simple life, and the Father will add on to you what is meant for you to have, and it'll be amazing. Okay, I understand. So, I mean, basically for me and others who are going through the same thing, you just recommend, like you say in your other videos, like uh, like face your mother, forgive her, and then just follow God, essentially? Yeah, or forgive there... your mother and your father. Forgive your mother for recreating you in her image, and forgive your father for not protecting you from your mother. He can help it. And, and then just do the silent prayer. Stay present. Stay out of your imagination. Stay out of the thoughts. And like you will be with God, and He will take care of you. Everything will work for you. You could not go wrong. Awesome, yeah, and that that kind of ties to. Uh, I saw the other day, you know, how you say all your thoughts are are not yours; they're of the devil. I'm like, that's so true because everything, like all the emotions and uh, heartache that make you do stupid things or whatever, like they've never brought you to a good place. So I, I found that very uh, insightful. Yeah, absolutely, man. You're paying attention to what's happening inside of you. I'm telling you, Alex, all except for practical thoughts, what you want to eat, you go going to work, you, you know, you buy a car or whatever, but all of your thoughts are evil. They are not your friend. They are your enemy. And when you believe one they're going to drive you to believe another one and another one and another one until they destroy you. They want your soul. Yeah, it's crazy how long that uh, it took me to find that out. But, you know, I'm glad uh, I figured it out when I did. And I appreciate what you do. How Thank old you. are you? Uh, 29. You're fortunate. You're blessed to be waking up at such an early age. Have you, <laughs> for, have you forgiven your mother? Uh, she currently doesn't live in the same state anymore. So I was thinking of FaceTiming her. Yes. I'd rather, I'd rather that. And then I, uh, I, I got in contact with my father. I, I really didn't want to, but I figured, you know, if I don't do this and he passes one day, I'm really going to regret it. So I'm also going to face him, uh, in the next coming weeks and just, uh, settle my differences, you know? Yeah. And that's good. If you can't go to where they're located, you can definitely FaceTime because if at all possible, uh, you want to be looking at them when you deal with them so you can feel the fear, to go into the fear. And in that fear of trembling and afraid and the thoughts tell you all these crazy things, God will save you from those spirits. So you want to be looking at them if possible. If not, you can do it by phone if you have no other choice. Yeah, yeah, I was on the phone with my mom last night, and I I was trying to get her to FaceTime, and she couldn't. So I was like, oh, we'll just, we'll just do it a different day. Yeah. Because I know what you mean. It's easier to say it over the phone versus face-to-face. It's uh, quite difficult, but yeah. I'll, I'll make it happen. Well, I wish you well. Let me know how it goes. Awesome. Thank you, sir. You Have a good one. You God too. bless. You too, buddy. Thank you. Everybody has the same problems, and the thoughts is in the imagination. Really, it's in the thoughts. And a thought, if you don't let it fall into the emotional aspect of yourself, a thought is just a thought. It's just a thought. That's all it is. An empty thought until you let it fall into emotions, and then you start feeling, and then you start overreacting, and blah, blah, blah. 
First time a call out of Utah, Jacob. Jacob, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hello, Jesse. Can you hear me? I hear you, Jacob. All right. Good to be with you. I have a question for you. I've been listening to you talk about how women have the spirit of the devil in them, and they can't help but uh, pit the children against the father. Right. And I'm I'm not yet a father, but I really want to find my lady and have kids. And um, and so I'm wondering, how does a father prevent that from happening? I know you have to start out right, not marry a woman that's older than you or that already has children, and you have to control her. So I <laughs> I just don't know how to do that. So I need how some old examples are you? of that. 20, or sorry, 37. <laughs> 37. And so your question is what now? The question is, what does a husband do in a relationship, in a marriage, to prevent the wife from, you know, spreading that the devil into her children and pitying them against the father? Uh, How does he maintain control in the house? And so you said that you do want to get married and have family, make children? Yes, sir. And why? Yes, sir. Why? Um, I believe as I turned my heart to God, I just find a desire to be a father. Why? And participate. I think it's part of God's plan. I think God put it in all of our hearts to be parents and to teach them right and to teach them to follow God. So you believe that is God's plan for you to get married, make children? Yes. I do. So if you believe that, do you believe that if it is meant for you to be married, have children, that God will put the right woman in your life that you should not be looking for one at all? <laughs> You're right. You're right. I don't trust God. You know, I'm, I'm learning about how to trust God and how to submit to him and, and trust him with my life. And so you say you don't trust him? I think I could trust him more. I, I do trust him, but I'm learning about the details of that. I'm learning the little ways that I still try to do it on my own. Well, there's no such thing as trusting him a little bit. Either you trust him or you don't trust him. Do you trust him? Yes. <laughs> I don't trust him. I don't trust him. Right. And so knowing that you don't trust him, Rather than believing the lie that of, of evil that you want a wife and kids, why not focus on knowing Him? Put that first before anything, or because we you don't know what you want in life, you don't know what you need, you don't know what yeah. you want. So even the idea that you want a wife and kids could be a made up lie coming from evil. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> I had not considered that. And why I just not? don't think Satan would want that. I don't think he would want that. I don't think he would be putting that in my heart. Well, I feel why like not? Why Satan do you don't think been... Satan would want that? <laughs> well, I think I've been serving Satan most of my life, and as I've been <laughs> doing that, I've been running away from from responsibility, from family, from taking on those taking on any responsibility. And that's to me, that's like the epitome of responsibility: taking on. But you should not want for a responsibility like that. You should want for nothing. But why do you think Satan wouldn't put that on your mind that you want a wife and kids? Why do you think he would <laughs> not put that on your mind? Oh, why do you? Why do I think Satan would not put that on me? Yeah. Um. Because I associate those things. I think Satan wants to destroy the family, right? And wants to uh, make it weak and make. Part of the weakness that he's put in my heart is to make me feel like I can't do those things. Like I'm, I'm, like I'm just not going to be able to do that well. And I think God wants me to believe the opposite, to believe that I can answer that call that he. But God doesn't want you to believe that at all. He only wants you to have faith in Him and nothing or no one else. Right. And so, why do you think Satan would not want for you to? want to get married and make children and cause you to get married and make children. Why do you uh, think he wouldn't want that? Well, well, now that, now that I'm thinking about it more, it, 
it does occur to me that maybe Satan would want, you know, not only does he want to, he doesn't just want to destabilize the family by um, not letting families happen. He also wants to make families that are messed up and dysfunctional. And um, so it occurs to me now that I definitely sense that even if I feel that my desire is a righteous desire, um, that if I go at it without wisdom, like I've, I've been married before and it was a huge mess. (laughs) And, uh, and so, yeah, I guess you're right. I guess. Saints absolutely want to encourage you to get married, make children so he can live inside a human being. The spirit Uh, of evil lives inside a human being. It cannot exist unless uh, it's inside of human beings. Okay, well. Hold on a minute. Can you hold? Yep. yep. Let let me take a quick break. Let me go quickly back to Jacob who wants a wife and kids. Jacob, do you realize you should not want for anything? What does that mean? Don't want for anything. Don't want for a wife, don't want for children, don't want for a family, don't want for a friend, don't want for money, don't want for anything. Only want for what is right. Okay, yeah. Our theme this year is want for nothing. And because you're wanting for a wife, Satan is telling you that you believe it, and he will Ah. give you one, and it's going to be the wrong one. Huh, yeah. So want for nothing literally means don't desire, don't give in, don't don't feed that desire for things. Just Absolutely. follow God and submit to God. Only seek the kingdom and its right way, and all will be added unto you. <laughs> okay, that's that's interesting. As I've part of my desire to get married was trying to submit to God and pursue God's will, and. Uh, so how, okay. Ain't no way you're going to get married and commit to God. You can hang that up. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Say there's that again. no way that getting married would cause you to submit to God. Ah. Not if getting married is your first choice. Yeah, not if I'm putting that first. first. Right. Yeah. And, and then the only reason you think you want to get married and have children, you're listening to evil. And evil, <laughs> because you're in your head, you're yeah. li- in your imagination, you're listening to evil, and evil is suggesting to you that, oh, you're getting married, you'll do better than your parents, you'll, you'll be a good father, you'll be a good... <laughs> and it's lying to you. <laughs> yeah. That's true. I am in my head a lot, and I, and I try to solve that by ideas that I get, and I think I do tie up I do think God wants us to have kids, but I think you're right that you have to be be connected with God in order for that to go right. And I know God that not, even if I'm, God neither want you to have children, nor does He not want you to have children. He doesn't care either okay. way about that. <laughs> okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know that. Have you forgiven your mother? Um, not yet. It's on my to-do list. Well, no wonder you think you want a wife. Why have you... <laughs> why? Uh, because in your condition, all you're going to do is marry your mama, and you're going to have the same problem that your father had with your mother. Yeah. And I... I ha- yeah, you're right. Why haven't you gone and forgiven her? I'm... I'm... Uh, I, it, it, it's been the last week or so that I've really taken what... You know, I really dived into. I, I listened to you a couple years ago and it, and enjoyed it, but didn't really get it. And then just this past week, I started to dive in more and realized how important that is. Um, and I recognize that that's true. I do. I don't trust her. I don't trust my dad. I've considered them loving people and have been confused about why I don't. Why it's so hard to love them? But I think that's because why they're think not they're, loving people. Yeah. And so your your to-do list, you have this to-do list. Yes, you ask, you're asking, how do I deal with an imaginary wife and imaginary children? 
You got to yeah. you got to go and forgive your mother, man. Why have how are you expecting to be of love and free if you don't go and forgive your mother? Yeah, I don't have a better I don't have an answer for that. You're right. I don't know what else to what else is to do. I I have talked to both my parents about things that happened that had a effect on me and they apologized to me and I said that I understood but I didn't say I forgave them. And why not? And because I, I don't think I did. I, I think I was trying to avoid. I think I was trying to be like, oh, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. But it is. Yeah. And I don't think I've admitted that to myself. And as a result, you're living in your imagination, looking for answers that would only set you up to lose. You are consulting with the devil one situation after another one, after another mm-hmm. one, after another. you're in a prison of your imagination and you're walking around in that cell consult, consulting with the devil. And he, he tell you, oh, this corner over here is a nice little corner and live there. <laughs> and, then, and then that doesn't work. And he said, oh, if you had a wife and kids to put in this corner, you'll feel better. And then he tell you this, and you're consulting with the devil. You're in prison. Yeah. I just keep expecting, maybe part of it is that I expect when I follow God, there will be something to do, something specific to do. But I guess that but is what you're not what following God. Do. You're not following, you're following Satan. <clears throat> yeah. You're not going to follow God until you see that you have this anger, which is resentment, which is evil, which is hatred, yeah. and you need to repent from the heart and go and forgive your mother and father, then God will draw you into the kingdom, and he yeah. will call you to follow him. One last question on this. I, I agree, and I, I'm going to do this. And how did you discover this? I know that you forgave by, your mom. By looking if, within. You listened within. To look, look within. You need to see what's going on inside of you. Are you doing the silent prayer? I just started doing it. I yeah. did it last night and this morning. Well, stay with that and just start pay, I'm telling you, pay attention to your thoughts. Stay present. Stay away from the past or the future. Stay present and the truth will make you free. Thank you, Jesse. Let me know how it goes. Okay, I will. Thank All right. you. All right, buddy. <laughs> Ruth is the first time caller out of uh, Texas. Ruth, welcome to the yeah. show. You're on the air. Awesome. Uh, hi, Jesse, and hey. everyone else on the show. How are you guys doing? All is well. Hey. Thanks for calling, Ruth. Yeah, so I'm not calling anything about the election, but I do have a That's question why. for you. Yeah. Um, so how do I do a better job of encouraging my husband to lead uh, if he is, I guess, not confident about decisions that he makes. <clears throat> what do you repeat that? I'm sorry. Yeah. How do I do a better job in encouraging my husband to lead when he is afraid to make decisions? By just working on you and you become uh, a light and and he might see it. And the light will shine on you and you will see how when to speak up to him about that and not to. Just take your eyes off him and work on you. Okay. That makes sense? Yeah, that, that makes sense. So that I'm not, I guess, discouraging him by focusing on him. Is that right? So that? you don't judge him. You don't try to make him be what you want him to be. You know, uh, 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 impose upon him your will upon him. Okay. Are okay. you working on yourself? I I am trying. I know there's things I need to work on. Like what uh, for an example? Uh, for an example, um, being patient with him, not expecting him to make decisions right away, or yeah, maybe there's you know, maybe there's there's things that he might need to work on, but realizing that it, it takes time instead of being frustrated. I um, want you to take your eyes completely off of him and just okay. look at you. You're going to be okay. surprised what you're going to find within yourself. 
It's going to be <laughs> shocking. Right, yeah. Did you know that you were evil? Oh, yes. I, I know I'm sinful and nothing good could come from me. Yeah. <laughs> Have you forgiven your mother? Um, well, I, I know you ask this question a lot, but I guess in my situation, <laughs> uh, I, I think I'm still working through it. I, I don't really know. Have you forgiven uh, your mother? Is, well, forgiveness is one of those iffy things. Like, I don't withhold from her. What? I don't with, withhold myself from her, so I, I don't I don't really know. Um, um, sorry. See, the baby said you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> the baby well, like, she's lying. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I one thing I need to forgive her is for not being there for me, but... Have you forgiven it, your mother? Um... No, I guess not. Have you forgiven your mother? Um, I guess no. <laughs> Have you forgiven your mother? Forgive her for what exactly? Well, you just said one thing about her for her not yeah. being there. That's one thing. But have you forgiven your mother? I mean. I don't hold it against it from her, honestly. Have you forgiven your mother? Yes. <laughs> so you went, you went to your mother and forgave her? I didn't go to her, but it's something that I had to do in my own heart. And well, how did it. you forgive her if you didn't go to her? Um, and forgive. I stopped, yeah, I stopped with holding myself from her or... What does that mean, I withholding myself from her? So, yeah, I avoided, I used to avoid talking to her and... and Can you hold for her. me, Ruth? Yes. Hold on, let me take a quick break. <laughs> Ruth, out of Texas, <laughs> so Ruth won't help in how to deal with her husband when he won't take the lead. Um, have you forgiven your mother? Yes, Jesse, I have. And you told her? I haven't told her. Well, um, how have you forgiven her if you have not told her? I've forgiven her in my heart, um, not to withhold against her. She doesn't believe she did anything wrong. Does um, she need to believe it in order for you to forgive her? No, no. And did God tell you to go to them and forgive them, and I will forgive you when you forgive them? Or did he tell you, just do it in your heart? Oh, I didn't realize I had to tell her. Yeah. I Yeah, I, I can definitely tell her. It's not an issue. You won't be afraid to? What did you say? Are you going to be afraid to tell her? No, I no. don't want to. I don't want to hear her say that she didn't do anything wrong. It, but yeah. I'm, I'm willing to tell her. Like, um, I'm not afraid of her, I guess. Yeah. Well, you don't need her to admit she did anything wrong or not. It's on her. Yeah. That's her hell, not your hell. You want to come out of your hell and have a real life. And the only, re only way you're going to come out, you got to forgive her, and then God will forgive you. you he'll, start to, he'll set you free. Okay. And have okay, you yeah. forgiven your mother and your father for not protecting you from her? For, for not... Uh, from can you say that one more time? Sorry. Have you forgiven your father for not protecting you from your mother? Uh, no, I have not forgiven my father. Why not? Uh, I don't know. I feel like a lot of my life struggles was because he's not there, <laughs> and it is just, because he wasn't a there. Reminder, and I'm constantly needing to. Forgiven, but I, I really do struggle with that. And so um, how is it that you have your eyes on your husband judging him when you got all the stone all, all in your body? Yeah. How is that? Well, I am very sinful, yeah. So how is it that you're judging your husband when you yourself <laughs> are not free? Right.
No, that was a question. Pretty, uh, that was a question. Contradicting. Yeah, it, it's ironic. It's wrong of me to do that. Yeah. Uh, the answer, yeah. And so let me ask, so go, are you doing the silent prayer, my silent prayer? Uh, I don't know what the silent prayer is, but I do pray. Um, and, and how do you pray when you pray? Well, I always give thanks, and then I, uh, if I need to confess my sins, and I confess, and if um, I need to work on anything or I have any worries in my heart, I pray about that, and I pray that I will live to glorify God, that I will bear good fruit. And if you notice none of your prayers are being answered? Uh, some of them are not. <laughs> yeah. None of them are being answered. Well, Satan answered a few of them, but have you noticed that they are not being answered? Hmm. Well, I mean... You still have a sinful heart. You still yeah. judge your husband. You still impatient yeah. with the kids. You still unhappy with them. And yet you're begging God, please help me. He ain't, he won't help you. Have you noticed that? Yeah, yes, I have. Yeah. And so why do you think he's not helping you? Because I'm my focus is not um, on living for God, but more living for myself right now. And also because God does not have anything to do with your prayer when you're whining, begging, and crying. Yeah. You're praying to the devil all in the name of Jesus. Hmm. You need to do the silent prayer, be still, and let go, and he'll take over. Then he can help you. Do the silent prayer, rebuildingtheman.com slash prayer. Okay. So well, start, definitely... start working on you, and then okay. you will see how to help your husband or whatever. Okay. So Thank you, can you give me an example of something that you want him to do and he doesn't do it? Um, well, we definitely do have struggles with in-laws, and, um, you know, he, he, he might struggle to protect me at times, and... Uh, I get frustrated at that. I don't expect him to say something, but I get frustrated when he does. <laughs> Give me an example of you mean, if you can, about struggle with in-law. Like who, your, his mother? or who? What do you yes, mean by yes. that? Yes, his mother mainly. And what type of struggle you have with her? Um, I guess she doesn't... I, I, I kind of, she treats me like I took her son away from her. Yeah. Or Mothers like are I, jealous of women who their sons marry because they want the sons for themselves. They want to be married to the sons. Yeah, and, and it makes it hard because I I mean I want their approval but it yeah, so I guess he 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 does he has a hard time saying anything and Sometimes I'm okay with it. Other times it does get to me because I feel like I'm having to protect myself. Does um, she come over to your house or something? No, we, we go over there regularly. Why? Well, you know, he's all he knew. All he knew his life was his family. He, that's, that's, he's very close with them, I guess. But he doesn't need to be close to them. He has... Uh, his own family now. Yeah, he he doesn't quite understand that we don't need to depend on them. Um, so when you tell him, I'm not going over there because uh, your mother's trying to control you and I'm trying to control you, I'm tired of fighting over control of you. Well, I, 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 I still go when he wants to go because Why? I don't that's right for me to... I feel like that would be unsubmissive of me. No, no you don't have to go over to his mother's house. What the? Yeah. His mother is okay. evil. You don't need to go around her. And you can be honest with the mother and her, him. Hey, you're evil. I'm not coming over to see you because my, if my husband want to go, that's on him. But I'm not coming over there. I see that you're evil 
and you and I are fighting, trying to control him, and I'm tired of the fight. Why don't you tell her that? Oh, I don't think you'd be happy to hear that. <laughs> but how do you know when you haven't told him? Well, he's already very defensive of them. He thinks that I hate them when all I just want is peace with them. Uh, but, you know, I'm not treated well by them, so I don't really know. All I, I think women, if, all married yeah. women have to go through fight. If the husband is weak, they have to fight with the husband mother because the mother is jealous of the woman that's married to her son. She want him for her boyfriend. She want him to be her husband. And here's this woman in between them. And then now the wife is fighting with the mother because the wife wants to control the man too. And it's all about fighting over control of the man. Both are trying to control him. If you were not trying to control him, you would be able to tell his mother how the cow ate the cabbage. How to what? <laughs> you would be able to tell him, his mother, how the cow ate the cabbage. Oh. I mean to tell her that, you know what? I see that you're jealous of us. You constantly want to fight us. I'm staying away from you. I, I mean, we, we're not going over, like, every weekend, but, you know, I, I we're definitely trying to stay away and trying to make sure that he's there with me when I go, because if, if he's not there or if he's out of sight, things go bad. So, so you go over there sometimes without him? I used to, to let them hang out with the kids, but I've learned that it's just best to uh, go when he's there. Yeah, or don't go at all. You don't owe any, have any obligation to his family, period. Your obligation is to him. How about the grandkids? They have they have their daddy and their mama. They don't need granddaddy or grandmama. Mm -hmm. that, that, that is really hard to uh, understand because, you know... He's raised with the mentality of, you know, you got to live five minutes away from us and um, you guys have to come over as often as you can. And Well, that's the brainwashing that mothers do to the sons and daughter, really. And they make them feel guilty if they don't do it because I'm your mother. I raised you and I did this and I did. But they're lying in order to control you. God said when you get married, the man to take his family far away from his family and her family. If God right. said you shouldn't be near them, how do you let the mother convince you that you should be near them? Yeah, that that, that doesn't work out <laughs> too well. No, it doesn't. And Did you know he, he was I a think, mama's boy before you married him? Um, no, I, I it didn't occur to me, but, you know, he only had about a month before... Uh, we got married uh, away from his family. He's been with them his whole life. And well, I mean, mess. I don't want to tell him that because that's not encouraging to him, you know. It doesn't need to be encouraging. It just needs to be the truth without anger. Okay. You be honest with your husband about that, but just don't be angry. And don't you try to control him either. Right, yeah, I... I, I'm I'm learning that I need to help him make decisions, but he's, you know, he doesn't feel confident, and I'm not helping him if I'm constantly telling him what to do either. Right. So. Absolutely. It may what happened is after a while you'll be the mama, he'll be the boy. And it feel like you have another child. Sometimes. How see you're already feeling that way. How old are you? I'm 28. And how old is he? He's the same age, 28. Oh, okay. So how many kids do you guys have? Two kids. Nice. So here's what I recommend. Do what you want, of course, but I recommend you be absolutely honest with him about his mother. Your mother hates me, and I hate her. And we both try to control you, so I'm staying away from her, and I'm going to work on myself to overcome the desire to control you. And you start working on you, and you're going to see some amazing thing happens happen in your life. Okay. 
and don't be angry uh, at him because he he just doesn't. Uh, based on what you've said, he just doesn't know. He doesn't know yet because he's just going by what he's been taught by his mother, and yeah, and he's not. I don't know if he's working on himself or not, but he's doing the best he could. Yeah, yeah, he's providing and everything. He's doing the best that he could. And mothers are evil. They have no love. It's all about themselves. Yeah, we're all selfish, yeah. So work on yourself and let me know how it goes. Okay, I will. Thank Any, you, Jesse. Anything you disagree with about that, that I've said? Um, I think everyone is evil. <laughs> You're right. Um, Every human yeah, being yeah. is evil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I uh, don't disagree with it. I guess the only thing is, is that maybe we shouldn't spend time we shouldn't allow them to be with their grandparents? To... No, don't let them be because you destroy them too in the same way she destroyed your husband and the rest of her children. Hmm. Okay. You tell her not to give them any uh, uh, candy. Don't give the kids any candy. She's like, oh, okay. And as soon as you walk out the door, she'll give them candy and tell them not to tell you. Yeah, I I'm scared that that will start to happen. Yeah, <laughs> she's just, evil. And there's some things I could let go, you know. And there's things that are worth battling over, and things that are not. There's um, nothing worth battling over. Stay away from her and lay your weapon down. You don't need to fight with her about anything. Leave her in her hell, and you work on you. Okay. I'll definitely work on myself. Is that all I can do? Yeah, that's all you can do. Yeah. Let me know how it goes, all right? All right. Thank you, Jesse. And, and start doing the silent prayer. Okay. I'll check it out. Um, yeah. You can do your little hoop and holland prayer until you see it's not going to work. But yeah. when you're doing with your hoop and holland, be still and know God and let God take over your life. Let the truth take over. Okay. I wish you well, yeah. Ruth. Thank you, Jesse. I really appreciate uh, you spending time to talk to me. You're welcome. Let me know how it goes, all right? Will do. Okay. Amazing. So one quick de- uh, soundbite, too, about the Haitian. You've been hearing that they're eating up all the ducks in the pond. Oh, Lord, not the ducks in the pond. Those ducks in the ponds at the park are white people first-class living. It's a, an example of it. They love to go to work and in the evening walk in the park. And on Saturday morning, walk in the park. I know people who get up early on Saturday morning and, and, and go hiking, go to the beach, or go somewhere, living that white life. And now they're brought the blacks over here and they're eating, the, eating up the white life. What the? And so... I, uh, my producer gave me this soundbite where the Haitian people um, are cooking and eating dirt. And they call it Haitian dirt cookies called bonbon tea. Bonbon bon bon tes. Bonbon tes. And it's really dirt. How can the black people always come and mess up everything? What's in the, I wonder what, I already know kind of, but what happened to the blacks that in their nature is nothing but destruction? Is, is it like a curse? I mean, we got the nappy hair. I was skin black. We don't like one another. We don't clean up the neighborhood or build. We don't build jets to uh, or to go out of out of out into space. Why? What happened? Would you like to just ask God? You know, God, go ahead. Tell me the truth. What was it? What was your plan for the blacks? 
we didn't like our hair because we were nappy. And so we got mad and made the white man pass a law that you can wear nap- nappy long hair to work. And now the men are wearing the long hair just like the women. And the, and the hair fall on their face when they talk. And they throw it back like they're white. And in the mind, it feels like white hair, but when you look at it, it's not white hair. What the? What happened? Really, what happened? What is the deal? Don't you like? And then black people treat each other worse than they treat the whites. Y'all have no idea what black people can do to one another and do do to one another. Their revenge on the whites is tamed compared to their revenge on other blacks, on one another. Really. And I'm telling you, it's all in the name. I, I, I'm just wondering out loud. But anyway, the Haitians are eating dirt, according to this report. This is for world focus. Watch this. They look a lot like pancakes or cookies. <laughs> the recipe passed down from generations here in Haiti. Women spend entire days making them. Grandmothers, daughters, and younger girls. Infants are nurse, while mothers work the mix. Kids seem to enjoy them, at least when our camera was around. But these patties, known as bonbon terres by the Haitians who eat them, are a grim reminder of just how poor this Caribbean nation is. They aren't sweet, they're hard to swallow, and <laughs> add almost nothing in terms of nutrition, because the cookies are actually made of dirt. It fills your stomach. When we haven't eaten anything, this dirt cookie fills your stomach. Traded, sold, and even hoarded by women here in the poorest section of the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere, wow. City Soleil in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. How can such a beautiful name be so messed up? Port-au-Prince, Haiti. Does that make you want to just run there and visit? But look at it. Amazing. Do we have, we have to go break, right? Okay, I'm going to take a quick break. I have one more soundbite from that, and then your phone call at Super Chat. Port of Prince, Haiti. Doesn't it sound like a white tourist area? <laughs> and right next door is Dominican Republic, and they do not want to, they got walls all around the place, and they black. They keep the other black Haitians out. Haitians out. Uh, one quick other soundbite about the Haitians, how they're eating dirt. Mm-mm, good. I wonder how Haiti becomes so poor. How come it's the poorest, as that report said, poorest country in the Western Hemisphere? How did it happen to Haiti? Why, Lord, why? Why, Lord, why, why the blacks? <laughs> why the blacks, Lord, why the blacks? Why, Lord? Instead of crying, why, George? Why, George? Lord, why, George? You may be crying, why the black, Lord? Um, Here's a, the final report on how the dirt, and I played the first song by before the break for those who are just tuning in, about the Haitian from World Focus, about how the Haitian eat, people eat dirt like in cookies. They call it cookies. Here's how the dirt cookies are made from World Focus. Small amounts of vegetable shortening, salt, and occasionally sugar are mixed in with the dirt and water as well. Made in places like this, an old fort where torture was once common by corrupt dictators here. The Fort de Manche is now a center of commerce built around the dirt cookies. A basketball court, soccer field, and school for hundreds of kids and home to many. To get to the basketball court, which acts as a preparation area for the dirt cookies, you have to cross this open sewer, which is littered with animal parts and trash and other nasty things, to get to an area where the cookies are laid out to dry out in the sun. You can see that these are still very wet, not quite ready to be served, but this is literally dirt 
being prepared for humans to eat on top of other dirt and filth. Amazing. So are you telling me that there's no there are no blacks in Haitian or Haiti that can clean up that place and make it right? Are you telling me that? There, there are no blacks in Haiti, men or women, that can go around, clean up, paint, put everything back together. Now do you believe me when I say that in 2034 or something like that, 40 something, when my country, America, is, when white people in my country are no longer majority but minority, that's what America's going to look like. The blacks ain't going to fix it. They're not going to know how. They're going to need the white man to do it, but the white man ain't got no white babies, so there ain't going to be no grown-up white people to do it. And America will become Haiti. Look at the blacks. They don't do that to clean up their own neighborhood. It looks like Haiti. If the white people move back into the neighborhood, they will clean it up and make it look amazing, but then the black will say, you are, uh, what do they call that when the white people come back home? Gentrification? Yeah, you're gentrified. <laughs> when they come back home. <laughs> <laughs> when the white people come back home, the blacks say, you gentrifying us. We don't want our place to look nice. What the? And the rent going to have to go up. So really, why the blacks can't clean up Haiti? They need the white man to go there and do it for them. If the white people were to go there, it would be beautiful. And the name would fit the, the, the look of the play, Port-au-Prince, Haiti. They don't look like no Port-au-Prince. They look like hell. Why? What is wrong that the blacks can't do it? We even have a black female judge sitting on the Supreme Court and has no clue as to why she's there except she's a black female. They call that DEI. And now we got a black female running for president by accident. <laughs> she doesn't even know why she's there. And she's only there because she's a black female. That's Haiti kind of a stuff. Why? I wouldn't really want to know why. 888-775-3773. Why, Lord? Why, the blacks, Lord? Why, George? Let me go to, is it Rocket? A first-time caller out of Atlanta, Georgia. Georgia, on my mind. Rocket, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hi, Jesse. Hey, How Rocket. You? All is well. Thanks for calling. Hello. Are you there? Hello. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's me. I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just started following you and listening to your teachings, and uh, I agree with a lot, and I disagree with some. Uh, I'm working on myself personally with forgiving uh, my mom for turning me from my father, and um, I was speaking to my father, and one night, I you were, felt you, you, your phone went out. You said you were doing what? I was speaking with my husband one night, one evening. Okay, okay. I and I, I told him I felt I started to see my mother as a human. What she must have went through yes. with us. Yeah, and I started to just really just feel like sorry for her in a way, and. I felt something. I felt my body go down really low to where I feel like I couldn't breathe. And I felt myself shooting back up when I felt like I forgave her. And I, I, and I explained to him the only way that I was able to breathe was I had to cry to let it out. Amazing. And so you went, hands up, I can't breathe? 
No, I just was struggling to breathe. And the only way that I was able to breathe, I had to like push out a cry in order to breathe. And my heart started beating like it felt like my heart pushed something out. What? And I asked, but what is that? What was that? I don't know. But if you don't know for sure, don't fill in the blanks. Leave it empty. Leave it uh, unanswered. And God will show you what it was. Okay. Because the devil's going to want to come in and give you an answer to what you don't know. And so don't mm -hmm. fall for that. And the devil will say, oh, you saved, or you are not saved, or you're this or that. All thoughts are all lies all the time. So let the thought pass and just leave it at, wow, that was amazing. I don't know what it meant. You know what I mean? Yeah. Man. I need to go and speak to my mother face to face. You're saying, right? Absolutely. You got to face her so you can overcome the fear. Okay. And my father as well. Yes. He passed. He He passed. How do I do that? Yeah. How do I do that? By realizing that your father had the same spirit, had the same spirit. I don't know him unless he forgave before he expired. He had the same spirit of evil in his mind and emotion that your mother has and that you are trying to overcome. And so he did the best he could. And he loved you. He just didn't know how to deal with your mother to protect you from her because your mother was his mother because you marry what you hate. You become attracted to what you hate. And so realize he loved you. He just didn't know how to help you. Yeah. I realize it. And when you face your mother, you look at her, hey, mother, I realize you turned me away from my father. You, you, whatever, right? Don't make up, don't plan the whole thing out, but wait and see. And I'm sorry for resenting you. I realize now you can help yourself. Just as, you know, you realize, you realize it, Rocket, that you can't help yourself. And God will forgive you, and he will change your heart. Salvation is of the heart. He will change your heart from evil to good, which is his nature, not yours, but his nature. And you will start to live from love, and love is the answer to everything. I believe that. Um, One more thing. Yes. Uh, My husband has a question, if you don't mind, concerning his forgiveness. Can he ask? He want to talk? Yes, he does. Okay, what's his first name? Alex. Okay. So make sure you face your mother and for, have no expectation, but forgive her. And are you doing the silent prayer yourself, Rocket? Yes. we. Yes, I started the silent prayer okay. um, with you, and uh, I just bl- clear my mind. and. Well, just don't, cl- do yeah, it. just relax. Don't clear your mind. Relax. And you want to observe what's on the mind. You want to watch those thoughts. And the, okay. light, and the light of God will destroy the darkness of the devil, which are the thoughts. The thoughts are evil, and they will be taken away from you if you observe them. Okay. Now, but, when you say observe, what do you mean observe them? You know how you sit and you're watching a movie? Yes. And you're not in the movie, but you're watching it, and it goes from one scene to another, then it goes to the commercial, then it comes back. All you're doing is sitting there eating your popcorn and watching, right? Yes. That's what you do with the thoughts. Okay. They'll go from one scene to another, one thought to another, to another, to another, to another. It does. And because you can see them, it means that you're not in them. You're not a part of them. But if you can't Mm. see them... It's because you are part of them, and you've been living that way all your life, and that's why you have not had a perfect life. Oh, okay. What a mess. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> uh, so you want me to talk to Alex? Yes, here he is. All right. Hey, Jeffy, how you doing? All is well. How are you, Alex? I'm good. I'm well. Nice. No man is good. Only God is good. All right. Alice, does your wife obey you? Yes, she does. <laughs> nice. Go ahead. You had a question for me or comment? Yes. Um, after listening to you for the past couple of weeks, you know, I listened 
to you as far as like how to apologize or how to, you know, get past some things. But I grew up in a home where my mama and father were both there. She never tried to uh, bad mouth him or make me feel like he was less than. So I don't have any issues with either of my parents even to this day. So I'm trying to search my own soul to figure out what do I, who I need to apologize to. Like I have, I have said the word that I hate some people in the past. And <laughs> I know it's, I, I know that that's wrong, but as far as my parents is concerned, if I don't have any issues with them. Is there anything else I need to search for? Do you, uh, so your mother was perfect. I mean, no one's perfect, but about, I don't have any issues with her. And was she perfect? No. And were there little things that she would say or do that along the way would irritate you or you wish she didn't say or do? Towards me? Toward you, or period. Uh, yeah, yeah. I could think of some things. Give me an example. Uh... Like, uh, I would say like when they're like when my parents would be arguing or something, um, you know, sometimes my dad would be like doing his best to communicate to her Yeah, and and she would like basically like pull the scab off the wound instead of just letting him, you know, how can I say it? Yeah. Like make amends with her she would bring up something old and just just ruin the the current apology yeah that he's currently trying to give and how did you feel when you saw her doing that to him well i would say in my inside i would say well if she would have handled it this way this problem it would be no arguing right now but yeah those to he chose to go that route, and now they're arguing. And when you would tell her about it, what would she say? See, there's always get defensive and, you know, try to come up with something that he did to her in the past, and and that's why she's doing it like that. And how did you feel when she would say that? And you know it was her, but she couldn't admit or would not admit it was her. Uh, it'll just make you feel like, man, I wish she would just get past this and admit that this is what the real issue is, but she keeps going back to this. And at times, are you, I know your wife is working on herself now, but before she started to work on herself, was she like that at times? Yes. And And how would you deal with your wife when she would do the same thing your mother did to your father? Uh, a lot of times we would argue. We yeah. would just argue or, or I would go in my separate corner. She would go in hers. And then later on, we'll, we'll find our way back to each other and talk it out. And that's uh, most uh, of the time. That's how it would go. And are you surprised you married your mother? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and if you didn't resent your mother, how did you become attracted to what you resented? And ended up with your mother. Well, I guess, I guess because that's the first, I guess that's the first woman that you know. <laughs> I guess. No, it's because you, you're attracted to what you hate. You need to forgive. I recommend you forgive your mother for just those things we've talked about now, where you would uh -huh. see how she treated your father. She would never admit she was wrong. And that would bother you when you saw her doing that. And then bothering the, the 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 bothering that you felt was anger, mm. because you okay. knew she was wrong and you didn't know how to deal with it, and your father didn't know how to deal with it. So even that made you angry. You need to forgive her for those things that you saw her doing that got to you, bothered you as a kid or growing up. Okay, gotcha. That makes sense. It makes sense. I never thought about it. No. Because I promise you, had you not had that that anger for your mother, you would have never married a woman just like your mother and then going through exactly what your father went through with your mother. 
Gotcha. Are you able to hold for a minute? Yeah. All right, hold on, Alex. 888-775-3773. I want to go back to Alex, a first-time caller there out of Atlanta, Georgia. I just want to understand about forgiveness and how to forgive his mother and if he needs to. Alex. Hey, Jeffy. Thank you for holding. Um, um, do you have any other questions about how to, your mother and why you need to forgive her? No, that was about it. Does that make sense of what we said, of those little irritating things that she did? Yes. Um, um, and, how, and your father, you have to forgive him, too, for not being able to protect you or stand up to your mother because just as you are married to your mother, he was married to his mother, and you and your wife are just repeating the same thing that your parents have done. Mm-hmm. And so you got to forgive your father for not being able to protect you, or stand and protect and stand up against your mother. He can help himself. Okay, and I have to do that physically. Yes, if you can do it face to face, it's best that way, because in facing them. If you you could you could do it by FaceTime if you can't go to wherever they're located, but facing them you can, you will get your courage back. Okay. Do it do it separately or at the same time with both of them. Whichever opportunity happens, if it comes, you go there and they're both together at the same time. Do it with both. If not, whichever come first. Okay. What do you think your mother would say to you, or how she would react, even though you don't? Uh, you know, what would you say, think she would say if you told her how the cow ate the cabbage? She'll probably deny it. <laughs> and and what and how do you feel about that? Well, like you said, you just you just uh explained to me how to how to conquer that. I'm gonna do it and yeah. and go from there. Yeah, right on. And it doesn't matter if she admit it or not. She blame your father or not. And same with your father. You for, And don't ask for forgiveness. You forgive them. And God will forgive you because that's what it means to confess your sins. Is mm-hmm. anyone that has anger is playing God. And anyone that plays God is a sinner, for the lack of a better word. You're playing God. And that's why God can't help you because you're being your own God. And so you're confessing that you're wrong for being angry. Anger is hatred. Hatred is judgment. And anyone that judges, they're playing God. So you're confessing your sins by admitting that you're wrong for being angry. And the Father, God, will forgive you. And it doesn't matter what your parents say or not say. He will forgive you. He will change your heart. You will wake up. And then... The light of God will erase, take away, destroy that old nature of yours, that old nature of anger, that old nature of fear, that old nature of of, of loneliness or looking for love or all that will be taken away from you because that's the nature of evil. And God will give you a brand new nature, which is his nature. Gotcha. You will renew your mind. Isn't that amazing? Amazing. <laughs> Any other question? No. Are you black? Yes, I am. So what's wrong I'm with what's wrong with the blacks? They eating the oh, they eating the dogs. They eating the, the the ducks from the park. They don't eat the duck from the park. What's wrong with the blacks? Has that, that actually been confirmed? They, has somebody actually been caught doing that? In the, in the dust from the park? Yeah. According to the, some of the people down there in Ohio. I guess they're just trying to survive because I, I watch I watch, uh, I watch all kind of uh, videos from around the world. And yeah. I see them eating all kind of animals all around the world. <laughs> and, uh, what a mess. China and Africa, all over the place. They yeah. eat all kind of stuff. 
So, nice. I, uh, one other thing, let me tell you before I run. I'm got to run now. Do you are you doing the silent prayer? Yes, we both started doing it. Okay, stay with yes. it. Stay with it. Stay with it. No okay. matter what, if the whole world turn against you, Alex, you stay present with God. You do the silent prayer. Stay out of your thoughts about the past or the future. You just stay present. And when you're present, when you're right here, right now, all the time, instead of your head, you it's it's I cannot find the word to express um the the life that the father would give you. It, it, yeah. you, you can't even imagine what it's like. It's my it's amazing. So stay present no matter what. Okay. Oh, amazing. So amazing. It, uh, do you have children? You and Rocket have children? No. Oh, okay. How long you been married? Oh man, since two thousand and three. <laughs> oh man. So almost what night? What was that? Yeah. And why you don't have children? Uh, complications. Oh, okay. Something beyond you and your wife control. Yeah. Oh, I got you. Yes. Okay. We what, wanted them, though. Yeah. Amazing. Well, well, I guess it wasn't meant to be. Okay. <laughs> uh, but any other questions, Rob, uh, Alex? No, nope, that's it. All right, buddy. Let me know how it goes. Okay. Is Rocket, does Rocket want to talk back or is she okay? You have any other questions? No, I just wanted to, I think you kind of, I, uh, <laughs> I just, I think you kind of cleared it up. I just wanted to know how I would go about um, asking for forgiveness uh, from uh, my mom. Well, don't ask for forgiveness. You apologize for resenting her now that you realize she can help herself. Okay. Okay. Um, I mean, do you and Rock, do you and Alice like each other? Oh yes, we like each other very much. That's uh, my that's my best friend. <laughs> nice. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah, well, I'm not a nice, I'm not a nasty woman. <laughs> right. Are you black? Say that again. Are you black? Yes, I'm melanated. Yes. Right on. <laughs> well, I wish you well. Let me know how it goes. All right. I will. I'll call back and let you know. Okay. Good talking to you guys. Same as same as same as you as well. All right. Be well. Okay, you too. Now. Right. Bye now. Sonia, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hey, Good so to talk to you. Thank you, Sonia. I appreciate Sonia. I appreciate you calling. Well, I'm calling from the infamous Springfield, Ohio. Oh, really? Um, where I've I've lived my whole life and grew up here, and um, I wanted to talk about something that I haven't seen in the. Uh, national news about uh, it really is truly a Haitian takeover in a, in central Springfield. And um, one of the most tragic things that's happened from them being here is um, we have a Northwestern high school and an illegal immigrant Haitian uh, that did not speak any English, did not have a driver's license whatsoever, was driving a vehicle and, uh, crashed into a school bus full of children and overturned the bus, and one of the kids lost their lives. I heard about and, that in the uh, news, national news. Yeah, and uh, so that happened. That's a we we it, it really busted up our community, and it's still still a sad, sore spot. And um, I have also uh, tried to go to the Walmart. <laughs> there and there are crowds of literally just crowds of two to five uh, foreign people <laughs> of all of the Haitian descent standing around in the parking lot, usually talking on phones, being real rude, just everywhere in the parking lot. You got to walk around them. You got to park around them. They're always at the customer service, um, uh, lines of them at the customer service arguing about um they want like Best Western and cash uh, transfers and stuff. Wow! And um, 
I've also, we have a really beautiful, gorgeous park uh, here in Springfield called Snyder Park. And um, I believe that the cats and dogs being eaten is most most definitely true because I've seen the Haitian people um, chasing the Canadian geese around and, at the park and uh, capturing them. I've even seen them walking in the park with the geese under their uh, arm. I saw one kid that was picking the the geese up by its feet and like leaving the park wow. with it. So I believe they're probably eating the geese too. Uh, and um, it's just a really it's it's not a safe place to be when you want to drive your car down. I'm going to say I'm going to name names that Bechtel Avenue is a place where they really congregate. There is a like a lot of shopping places. The Walmart is there, a lot of restaurants and stuff. And it's just overrun with 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 illegal uh, immigrants. That's amazing. They can't speak our language. So uh, yeah. so you have. Have have anyone have you heard or seen uh, for yourself anyone witness these people eating cats and dogs? I have not seen, but I know of two neighbors on a particular street that have complained that their pets are missing. <laughs> but one was a uh, uh, both uh, cat owners, and one of the cats had, uh, I think, three kittens. And all the kittens and the cat is missing, and so is the next door neighbor's cat. Wow! And so- and it's kind of an unusual thing. One of the cats is like ten years old, so it wouldn't just all of a sudden run away. <laughs> That's amazing. How are you personally feeling about this invasion? I I I feel violated. I feel like it's really unfair. Um, and I also feel almost unwelcome in my own town. Yeah. For example, going shopping in the area, and you know, I get that, that from the groups of people. You get dirty looks. You get um, they don't move out of your way if you're trying to push your shopping cart. Um, it's it's um, it's an uneasy feeling. So, so you why? And I've been I've been asking this for a long time. Why are white people afraid to stand up for themselves? White people? Yes. Why do they let things like why do they let things like this happen? Go ahead. I personally am not. I actually sport one of your White History Month shirts in the month of July. Right on. And I get July. Will I get always. a lot of blowback. Oh, oh. I really get a lot of blowback on that. If I if I if say I'm in a conversation, I'm 47, if I have a conversation with a group of my peers and I say, like, oh, I'm going to maybe <laughs> put a put a sticker or um, like, a, uh, like a mega thing or a, um, you know, a Springfield Strong type of shirt or, or, or voice my opinion, people are always like, oh, no, don't do that. Don't yeah, do that. No, yeah. you, you better look out. There, people always warn me. You know, I could get shot. I could get you know, anything. Anything could happen. I could get carjacked. And so, I personally am not afraid. But I'd say the majority is. I, I I'm, I'm proud of who I am and what I am. I didn't right have on. a choice in it. I, I'm meant to be here, and I have just as much right as anyone else. And if, if other races or other nationalities would respect me, I respect them just the same. But yes. I don't feel respected by anyone. I know. What a mess. So, last thing that I got to run, um, now that these people are there in in Ohio, Springfield, Ohio, there's no way that they're going to be put out of the town. Uh, are the white people going to... building gonna, housing. Are the white people going to move away or are they just going to tolerate it? How is that going to go? I'll tell you, it's a really sad thing, and I don't want it to be true, but I have a feeling that we're just going to tolerate it. We are building a really uh, an enormous 400,000 unit, uh, uh, like a low income uh, housing development to um, to house these people. Wow! So that means so I think people are just rolling over and accepting it. And it's only going to get worse because those that are there already, the Haitians that are there, eventually they're going to have more of their family members and friends come over to Ohio from Haiti, 
and it's just going to even it's going to get worse and it's not going to get better. That's right, and they'll be able to afford the housing because they get assistance, and us people that are paying those bills for them and working for a living, paying our taxes, are not going to be able to pay our mortgages anymore. <laughs> That's amazing. One last question, question Sonia, that I got to gotta run. Um, when Trump, when and if Trump get in, will he, I don't know if you know the answer to this or not, but will he be able to deport these people back to Haiti? I trust that he will. Yes, I believe he will be able to, and I think he will take action on that. I do, promise. too. I do, too, if he get in. Oh, good. Awesome. Awesome. Amen. Amazing. Amazing call. Watch out for your cats and dogs. Amazing call. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate it. And you be uh, just be aware down there and uh, call me again. Oh, sure thing. Thanks again for taking my call. Awesome, Jesse. Have a great rest of your day. You, too. Thank you. Amazing. What a mess, huh? If ever we needed you, Lord, we need you now.